everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sinead and primarily I'm a vlogger, but occasionally I like to dabble in some baking videos. If that sounds like something you're interested in, please don't forget to hit subscribe before you leave this video. So you can probably tell by the title of this video that today I am going to be taking you through the steps to make a traditional Irish Christmas cake. And if you're not ready for the Christmas season to begin, then look away now. Happy Christmas! <laughs> The Christmas cake has been a staple in my house at Christmas time for as long as I can remember and I'm so excited to share this recipe with you all today. Now this is a three day process so get yourself set up, get ready, you have to set a weekend aside for this but it is so worth it, the smell that is going to fill your house is going to be incredible. So without further ado, let me show you how to make our traditional Irish Christmas cake. For this recipe, you're going to need 450 grams of sultanas, 225 grams of currants, 225 grams of raisins, 100 grams of glacé or candied cherries, 50 grams of mixed candied peel. You'll need the juice of one lemon, the juice of one orange and also the zest, 100 grams of slivered almonds, half a teaspoon of vanilla essence, one tablespoon of golden syrup and four tablespoons of a good Irish whiskey. So the very first thing you want to do on your journey to this fabulous Christmas cake is to put all your ingredients down to and including the whiskey, all the juices into the bowl and make sure you're mixing it up really, really well. This soaking is absolutely vital to make sure that you get the most moist and beautiful finished cake that you possibly can. So don't be tempted to skip this step. Once you've added everything to the bowl and given everything a really good mix, grab whatever sealant you have to make sure that the bowl stays airtight, cover it and leave it to stand for 24 hours. Day two is baking day, but first you need to prep your tin. Any tin between nine and 12 inches should be absolutely perfect for this step. And I brought in mom to help me with this because I am so bad at lining cake tins. She's going to cut two sheets of grease proof paper that are the same size that are going to fit the whole way around the inner part of the tin and the outer part of the tin. It's actually quite hard to describe. So watching it is probably your best bet. She's also going to take a third sheet of greaseproof paper and this is going to form the circular lining of the bottom of the cake tin. So by folding the paper into two smaller triangles, you should end up with a perfect circle at the end that can fit snugly in the bottom of your cake tin, like so. Once you have all your shapes measured out, make sure you grease the paper really well to make sure that we don't get any sticking during the baking process. You can see that the two larger sheets have been halved, which makes it much easier to sandwich the cake tin between the two layers. Really, the goal of this is to make sure that you can't see any of the cake tin exposed. It can be quite tricky to tie the two layers snugly around the cake tin. So for this, we needed an extra pair of hands. But that's it, your cake tin is ready. To make your sticky cake batter, you'll need 280 grams of plain all-purpose flour, 280 grams of Irish butter, 225 grams of soft brown sugar, five eggs, 50 grams of ground almonds, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of mixed spice, and half a teaspoon of salt. Cube your butter and add it to your mixing bowl. Combine it with the brown sugar. You're going to cream the two of these together, starting off on a low speed on your mixer and working your way up until both are creamed well together. You'll know the mixture is ready when it's a nice pale color. And at this point, you can start to add your eggs one at a time, really slowly, making sure that each one is incorporated properly before adding the next. This is to make sure that no curdling occurs. But if it happens, don't worry, just add a spoonful or two of the flour, mixing that in, and then adding a spoonful of flour with each subsequent egg and all should be fine. Next, you're going to add the remainder of all your dry ingredients into the bowl and give them a good mix so they're all well combined. 
now it's on to combining your wet and dry ingredients. I like to fold in the flour mixture just to make sure it gets really well incorporated. The mixture will eventually be quite thick and sticky and hard to work with and that's exactly how you need it to be. The fruit mix and the batter ends up being quite a heavy mixture. So I actually had to add a portion from the larger fruit bowl into the batter, mix that up really well before adding the batter back into the larger bowl. Once the batter is all mixed up and ready to go, grab everybody in your house and have them stir the batter and make a wish. It's tradition. Preheat your oven to 140 degrees Celsius for a fan. All other oven temperatures are in the description box below and start to spoon your mixture into the prepared cake tin. Take the back of your spoon and smooth out the edges so it's slightly higher around the edges than in the middle and pop it in the oven to bake for three and a half hours. Don't be tempted to open the oven door until at least three and a half hours are up. All in all, it could take up to four and a half hours depending on your oven. The cake should sit in the tin for 24 hours and once you remove it from the tin, it should be ready to be placed into an airtight container, just like this one that we got from Ikea. First, however, it's time to give the cake that very first feed of whiskey. Remove the cake from the tin and place it upside down on a sheet of greaseproof paper. Peel back the paper and grab a skewer so that you can make five or six holes in the bottom of the cake all the way around the diameter to make sure that there is space for that whiskey to soak all the way through. Grab a spoon and your whiskey and start dispersing the whiskey all around the cake. Don't worry about being too accurate, it'll all soak in anyway. This soaking in whiskey gives the Christmas cake its distinct boozy fruity flavour and also allows it to stay preserved for many, many months if it lasts that long. Once you've allowed the whiskey to soak in, wrap up your cake and seal it tightly. From here on out, every week until Christmas, one day a week, set some time aside and feed that cake. Make sure you get all the way to the edges to give it that maximum flavour. And when you're ready to decorate on Christmas Eve, these are some of the decorations that we've had here for years that go on the cake every year just to make it that extra little bit special. So we've got the cake base that we've used for God knows how many years. It's even scratched and cut up. We have some decorative paper that goes around the edge. And we also have my favourite, little tiny pieces of holly and some Christmas trees to go on top and then of course you can finish it with a dusting of icing sugar. I really hope you enjoyed baking the Christmas cake with us this year. We had the best time. All the recipe details are in the description box below. If you recreate this recipe I'd absolutely love to see it and if you make any traditional recipes at home please leave them in the comments below. I'd absolutely love to see what all of your Christmas traditions are. So if you like this video please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit subscribe and I really hope I will see you back again. Bye!